Welcome to Bo Deedle's One Tough Podcast. Well, today I don't have a guest with me. I was going to have uh, the head of the DEA, and basically uh, they had promotions today, and I talked to the chief of detectives. But you know what I'm going to do today? Being that I'm not on any other news media, I think we're going to go over what's going on around the world in New York City, and I think this is a great place. I have a lot of people that tune into our podcast. If you really want to know the truth, I don't pull no punches, and I really don't care. What I say, all I say is when you hear the truth, you know what, that's what you're going to hear. So basically, you know, we have been watching there with the Senate hearings with the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. And then the former director of the Secret Service there, Kimberly Cheadle there, she resigned last week. And and then all of a sudden it comes out, the acting chief was on there under some really tough question from the senators. And a lot of the issues that were brought up there, even the acting head of the Secret Service didn't have too many answers. And uh, with all respect to that, you know, when you ask direct questions when you're being questioned in front of a Senate subcommittee. You want to make sure when you say something, you're telling the truth because if you start to make up things and you get caught, it, it could hurt you. So I respect the fact that the uh, acting director of the Secret Service said, I'll get back to you with that information. That's a that's a fair concept as far as I'm, I'm concerned. You know, Ted Cruz is really tough and, uh, you know, he's just – accusing the Secret Service of using politically motivated decisions to deny proper security for the president. Look, I'm in a security business. I talk to Secret Service agents, retired, former Navy SEALs who became Secret Service agents, and one million percent, it was a lax of manpower. It was not a really good run security operation. I've worked in security details with the Secret Service. I did three National Republican conventions and uh, as private security, working together with Secret Service, we have a well-coordinated, effective security plan and communication <clears throat> is the most important thing. Now, we all hear about, oh, they had to hire some support from the local cops, but I just can't understand how you could be support and not have a essential communication. Now, the Secret Service is the overall keeper of security. I don't care if there's state troopers there. I don't care if there's local police there. When there's a presidential candidate or there's a president Vice President, the Secret Service becomes the lead security group there. The responsibility is on them. The responsibility is on them to coordinate. And we know ourselves in New York City, what happens is when the president, vice president, or what candidates come to New York, we have the intelligence divisions that supports the uh, Secret Service. We also use our own emergency service sniper teams to support the Secret Service. But there's a really complete communication there. And the acting director, Ronald Rowe, uh, you know, he admitted with all respect to him that he's ashamed of the security lapses that happened. Well, you know, only by the grace of God, I really believe that Donald Trump is alive. And you're talking about a 223 round go coming in at about 30, uh, 3,000 feet per second. If that would have clipped his back of his skull, his skull would have got blown off. And we would be talking uh, about the assassination of Donald Trump. Thank God that's not what we're talking about. But <clears throat> we have to learn from our mistakes, and we have to have uh, the proper security for the president, vice president, candidates, because this can happen again. Because you got other nuts out there that watched how this happened, says, "Oh, I could do that." You got to remember the gun that was used, the A uh, AR-15, that didn't have no uh, super scope on it thing, and he was about 150 yards away. And again, I fired many long rifles and all that. You don't have to be that talented, but under the uh, uh, under the type of equipment that's out there, I mean, you could get a 50 caliber sniper rifle that you could take a shot a mile away, and some of the shots are recorded over miles away. And uh, all I got to say is we've got to tighten up our security, not just for Donald Trump, for uh, Kamala Harris now 
and for Biden. I mean, these are political people, and they should be protected. And also J.D. Vance, too, the uh, vice president candidate. So all of a sudden, you know, what came out again with this was that there was delay about Donald Trump speaking there when he was in Pennsylvania. And there were some people that were at the metal detectors. They delayed the him going on stage. So they didn't follow, you know, what it is because some people entered there without proper uh, uh, entrance and all that. But there were things going on and all these things that come out about People seeing this guy acting suspicious. He was on a radar a half hour before. Hey, we got to be a little sharper than that. And then all of a sudden, he obviously had to scope this thing out. He had a, I think he brought a ladder. So there's so many things here. Conspiracy, I, I don't want to stretch it that far. Because unless you show me evidence, you know, I don't believe in conspiracy theories unless I see evidence. Am I open for it? Damn straight, I'm open for it. I'm open for anything. And then all of a sudden, this funny uh, media AI, uh, they, they're out there. And when you Google in there about Trump, uh, it, it all of a sudden pops up Kamala Harris. And when you're asking the, uh, the uh, media AI about the assassination attempt on Trump, and they put in there as fictional, and uh, it, it's just... When they start to censor searches, then the government has to get involved with this. These are public uh, information sources. You can't censor domains. And if I want to look up what happened with Donald Trump with the assassination attempt, why wouldn't I be able to see this? Also, now we're, that's leading us into our election. And uh, we all of a sudden see Kamala Harris with all respect, I'm not going to chop it down. She's a lovely lady, but someone who really, really hasn't done much of anything, even as a vice president. She was tasked with one thing. Now they're all angry. Don't call her the borders are. What the hell are we going to call her? She was sent in there to straighten out as far as what was happening at the border. I think we have well over 15 million people in our country right now that came across our southern border in the last at least five to eight years. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real travesty what's going on. And, and we're going to lead into a little bit more of what's going on with the gangs that from Venezuelan gangs that have come in. So now we're talking about Kamala Harris. She's going to be looking maybe at that astronaut Mark Kelly or Josh Shapiro from Pennsylvania. You know, these, uh, uh, two two very good vice president candidates. But we got to remember something. We're voting for someone, for president of the United States, Kamala Harris, if she becomes the nominee, which looks like it's going to be. But remember, what I would do, I wouldn't attack her at all. All I would do is attack her for the policies of her predecessor, what's going on. And that's something that we're talking about. Now, all of a sudden, they're coming out. You know, I'm 73 years old. And I've seen a lot. Now all of a sudden they're coming out. They want to term limit Supreme Court justice and limit them 18 years on the bench. And they can uh, presidents can only nominate justices every two years. New ethics codes and all that and conflicts of interest. These are things that they want to implement. Also, they want to try to get a constitutional amendment that would reverse the court's ruling that presidents have immunity on official acts. So now they want to rewrite what the judgments of the Supreme Court judge. This is getting like really crazy. And, uh, you know, next they want to have the District of Columbia become a state. Obvious reasons. They want two more Democratic senators. Look, it, all I say is America is a democracy. And a fair election is all I ask for. And if the people of this country want to elect who they want to elect, they should have the right without any kind of nonsense going on with the uh, votes. And in my whole thing, again, and I stand fast on it, you go on an airplane, you got to show identification. Why in the hell don't we have to show identification when we vote? What is the problem? Now, all of a sudden, they're talking about giving illegal people in this country the right to vote also in elections. To me, that's ridiculous. We're changing our laws as we're going along. You know, <clears throat> so now the big thing that's getting me a little nervous is what's been going on 
with Israel, our great ally over there. We all know about what happened with those 12 young boys there that were killed with the rocket attack in Israel on the soccer field. Now, all of a sudden, we've just struck uh, into Lebanon, and we took out his this Hezbollah commander, Fuad Shithead, uh, whatever it's called, Shukar. I can't even speak. It's S H U K R. I really don't know how to spell his name or say his name. I really don't give a shit. All I can say is, congratulations, Israel. Take that garbage can out. And then all of a sudden, the way Israel's doing it, they're not blanket the attack. They're surgically going in there. The best thing I saw was they went into Iran and they went into Iran and they took out they took out this other fella here, this Hamas leader, Ismail H A N I Y E H. He was killed in Iran. They they surgically struck him and threw a, a missile in and killed him. Now all of a sudden these guys who are uh, Hamas leaders doesn't anybody question, where is the questioning of every one of these leaders are billionaires? Uh, maybe they were good in the stock exchange. Maybe they, they got the, the, the NVIDIA stock. Is that where they got all their money? I don't think so. Billionaires. And then the other one's hiding out in Qatar. Every one of these Hamas leaders are billionaires. Where is the questions? Where all the money came from? I'll tell you where the money come from. With you, aid from all over the world, trying to aid the poor people of Palestine there to feed them, to house them. That's not going there. It's going into these scumbags' pockets. And if no one wants to question that, that would be one of the things I would fully question. Where did they come up to become billionaires like that? I work my ass off, and I'm still trying to st struggle here. And I work every day. I'm not a billionaire. I wish I could be a billionaire. I guess I got to take over a country, and you become a billionaire. That's how you do it. And uh, I'm glad that we're sending some more aid to Ukraine, uh, $1.7 billion. And they're sending some of those F-16s over there with some good armament that they can help them with this attack uh, of Russia in there. And again, I don't like war. I hate war. But we have to be able to take this world and get it back in the right direction. We're going so much off Key. Now I want to revisit. I want to revisit what's going on over in Venezuela. They had a they had an election over there with this Maduro. This is one of those other Chinese checkers election. I call them Chinese checkers because they had this election figured out. Even though the election, the votes were starting to go against Maduro, all of a sudden, da -da 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 the cavalry showed up, similar to the cavalry showing up on our last presidential election in my lifetime. I never saw a presidential election that stopped counting votes at midnight. But the last election, da -da 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 -da, all of a sudden these vans were showing up with some more absentee ballots and ballots. I, I'm, not, I'm not one of these theories saying that the election was stolen. But certainly there's questions that I like answered. I want fair elections. That's what I want. So now Maduro was over there. And... Uh, they're demanding now a recount in Venezuela with Maduro because all of a sudden uh, uh, the transparency there is not so good. That is not an election that you really can count on being real. That's all I say. Now we get with a little better stuff. I used to be a gymnast. I was a high bar, parallel bars, Richmond Hill High School. We had the physical fitness team there, Marine Corps physical fitness team. I was a captain of that one for two years. I was on a high bar, giant swings, parallel bars, flyaways. I enjoyed the friggin' hell out of watching the Olympics the other night when we had our men's Olympic team that was competing there. And I just felt so proud. And I actually had a tear. There's this kid, Stephen, I'm going to hope I pronounce his name right, Nederisic from Massachusetts. He was a young fella. He looked like a bookworm with these glasses. Like he looked like Where's Waldo? But he, he was a nice looking kid there. But all he did was one event. He had to wait for everyone to finish. And it was the pommel horse, which is a very difficult, I used to do it. It was a very difficult apparatus. It's all strength in the arms and you got to keep on moving. And when this kid, he needed a certain score so the Americans could win the gold medals. And he had done 
No other apparatus. Yeah, you have the high bar, parallel bars, vault. You have free exercise, pump, free exercise. And then you have this pommel horse. But this kid waited, waited. And if you watch the camera on him, he wore glasses. And he kept standing up, going back and forth with, with his routine in his mind. And when he got on that pommel horse, tears came to my eyes. And I'm a tough guy. But I was so proud of America, of our team, and of this young man. God bless you. That's what America is all about. And when they hoist the American flag and sing the national anthem, there wasn't too many people that were kneeling down or putting fists up. They were very proud to be gold medal winners. And that's what the Olympics is about. Pride for your country and honor your country. And then our women's gymnastic team, wow, they got the gold medal. And that little Simone Bellis, wow, how great are they? Congratulations again. I was a gymnast. This is 15 hours sometimes. How about 8 to 15 hours sometimes training? These kids are the best out there. God bless them. I'm so proud of our gymnastic teams. I'm proud of everybody in the Olympics, but mainly our females and our male gymnasts. God bless them. That's it. And then my friend May Adams, I talked to him yesterday. I talk to him all the time. I go back with him 20 years, and I was talking to him yesterday, but that what came out was uh, about this rat pack. Now, all of a sudden, we got rats running around. Now, he's formulating people with hats called the rat pack, and they're going to—now you could join the New York City rat pack. Uh, Mr. Mayor, not for nothing. We got a lot more serious problems than the rat pack. Our crime rates in homicides is 20% above pre-pandemic. We got problems going on. And I'm telling you right now, the big deal here now, and if you don't recognize it, Mr. Mayor, this Venezuelan gang treating the Agauga, whatever the hell it's called. I can't pronounce these names, and I really don't give a crap. All I could tell you is these are criminal gangs that were incarcerated in Venezuela prisons, the most notorious gangs there are, and, they, and they've been given the green light to open fire and attack cops in Denver because the police officers over there, God bless them, in Denver are going after these little punks. Now all of a sudden they get a green light to shoot cops. Damn you. Eric, they're in New York City too, Mr. Mayor. We've got to deal with them, please. And they're making believe that the asylum seekers, all they're doing is coming into our country to cause chaos, murder, robberies, Every aspect of criminality. And if we don't get it, we don't even know who they are. They're all here illegally. We have no identification on them. Where are we going with this, Mr. Mayor? Right now, we're on the eve of destruction in New York. And this is where, how it's going to end. And this is how it's going to end on the streets of New York. Innocent people being done down. Family members that you know and I know. It's horrible. And you know what? They get passed because... They, they they make sure that they're not the younger members are not wearing the tattoos. How we identify these gang members, they got like clocks on them and stuff like that. They have identifying tattoos on them, gang members. But the only problem is we can't do this because we can't go undercover. We can't infringe upon their personal rights because all these friggin' liberal son of a guns, including those morons in the city council. Remember when I sat here, I talked about city council reform, city charter reform, to take the power away from the city council of liberal pieces of garbage and give it back to the mayor. But no, they veto everything this mayor tries to do. I still stand by, why can't we put it on a referendum in November to put the power of policing and law enforcement back to the mayor? I want people in New York to vote for it, not these scumbags in the city council, liberal pieces of garbage. Okay, getting off that right now. You know what? We've seen it on and on and over and again in Times Square with people kicking officers, spitting at them. Now talking to the police officers again. I love cops. I love cops. I was a cop. I was a detective. But these poor kids out there today, anything they do, they're being questioned. They're being second-guessed. And when this assassination occurred assassination attempt on Donald Trump. I talked to Secret Service guys, and it's, it's, it's again, the George Floyd effect. 
Ever since that horrible thing, we never want to see George Floyd died. But all of a sudden, with the riots that were people were able to get away with robbing, beating up Austin, destroying property and everything. And every time the cops take any action, they're the ones being questioned. The criminals are the ones that get the opportunity to do whatever they want. And then when a cop tries to go out there and arrest them, and they've used a little too much force, they think. Next thing is the cop's on the hot seat. He can lose his job. Now all of a sudden he or she can lose their house. They can get sued civilly. Why would you want to do anything? We've got to turn this around. Everything's upside down. You know, we have stabbings in the subways. We got, we got so many things going on with people walking around. And still, still, I just took my car. My Mercedes, I just got out of Manhattan, Mercedes. One of these friggin' bikes smashed into my car. They're all over the place. No license plates. They have no license plates. They have no license. We don't even know who's on them. We don't know who's in our country. We don't know who's in our city. When is this going to stop? When are people going to realize the most important thing right now in all people's minds is public safety and security, and we certainly don't have it, and New York City is not safe, my friend Eric Adams. I'm sorry to tell you, New York City is not safe, and it's not perception. It's factual. You can walk around and you can see what's going on every day. This is not this is not make believe land and people are fearful in this city. You know, we we just talk all the time and this is this is something that I enjoy doing my podcast cuz I'm able to speak the way I want to speak on my podcast and tell the truth. If you can look into this camera and you can look at me in my eyes and you can tell me that you have no fear of being in New York City today, look at it, it's completely different. <clears throat> you know what I look forward to? I look forward to Christmas time in New York. I look forward to snow. Look forward to walking around Rockefeller Center with the Christmas tree and being happy and listening to kids laugh. But you know what? This Christmas is not going to be that good because you're going to have to be worrying about looking over your shoulder, looking around, who's going to attack you from where. We've got to get together on this thing. And Mayor Adams, you know what you got to do? Every day you got to call upon those morons in city council that they got to start supporting the police and not going against the police, damn you, city council. And that's what I have to say this week. I'll be back next week with an update and also... My guest, the head of the New York City Detective Endowment Association, which I'm very proud to still be a union member. And everyone, please, God bless you. Please be safe out there. Remember, link into Bo Deedle's One Tough Podcast. Tell your friends about it, too. Thank you.